All right, welcome everyone. This is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, I'll be discussing why you should not be trading very tight or very narrow vertical spreads and iron condors. And as you'll see in this video, the reason has to do with the fact that with these very tight spreads, you'll be almost entirely cutting out the option Greeks. Now, as always, before we get started here, for those of you who are new to the channel, I just want to let you know that I do also teach on Skillshare, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two-week free trial. Okay, so diving in here now, and the stock we'll be looking at in today's video is going to be SPY, which is actually an ETF that just tracks the S&P 500. But for the purpose of this video, we just need to focus on the trade tab. And specifically, let's go into the July expiration cycle here. Let me scroll down to the at the money options. There we go. And so as I mentioned, the reason why these very tight vertical spreads and iron condors are problematic is because you'll be almost entirely cutting out the option Greeks most important of which are Delta, Theta, and Vega. Now, if you have no idea what these things are, I do have a separate YouTube video explaining the option Greeks on a very in-depth level. I'll post a card above linking to it so you can watch it. And I do recommend you watch that video first if you do not know what the Greeks are. So now let's say for the sake of example, I am bullish on SPY. And as a result, I want to sell an out of the money put credit spread, which is just one form of a vertical spread. And let's also say that I was not aware that very tight spreads are problematic. And so in this case, I wanted to sell the 418 strike put option and then buy the 417 strike put option. So this would be a $1 wide put credit spread. And let me go ahead and set the actual order here. Go to sell and then vertical. Let me scroll down a bit here. And so there you go down here, sell one contract, 418 strike put option, buy one contract, 417 strike put option. The total credit I would receive for placing this order would be 30 bucks. And of course, if by July 16th, by the expiration date, if SPY is above 418, then I will walk away and keep the full 30 bucks. But oftentimes I do not wanna to have to wait all the way until the expiration date, right? Because currently that's still 41 days away. That's a very long time. So if somewhere along the way to the expiration date, if SPY has a pretty big rally, that's going to ideally reduce the value of this credit spread, in which case I can just buy it back for a lower price and make the difference as profit, right? For example, if I initially sell this spread for 30 bucks in credit, and then I buy it back sometime down the road for only 15 bucks as a debit, then the difference there is 15, that would be my profit. That being said, even that particular scenario can still take quite a long time to play out for a $1 wide credit spread like this. And again, that has to do with the Greeks of the contracts that are in my spread. Specifically, the Greeks will cancel each other out, right? Because I'm short one contract and long another contract, the Greeks are going to oppose each other in this spread. So for example, let's focus first on the delta of the 418 strike put option. The delta here is 41, and then for the 417 strike put option, it's 39. Now delta, if you recall, simply tells you how much the price of an option will change for a $1 move in the price of the underlying asset, which is SPY in this case. So for the 418 strike put option, because we sold this one, we therefore want the price of this contract to decrease, right? Just like with anything you sell, you wanna sell at a high price so that potentially you can buy it back for a lower price and make a profit. So if SPY goes up by $1, the price of this put option contract is going to decrease by $41. So that would make this part of the spread profitable by $41. Now, what about the 417 strike put option? We bought this one. And when you buy something, you want the price to increase. But if SPY goes up in price by $1, the price of this put option contract is going to fall by $39. So in summary, we're going to make money on the 418 strike put option, but lose money on the 417 strike put option. But since the delta for the 418 strike put option is just ever so slightly larger than for the 417, if SPY does go up by $1, this entire spread will be profitable by a very, very tiny amount, specifically $2, right? We'll make 41 bucks on this option, lose 39 on this one, so the difference is two. So I hope by now you can start to see how the Greeks on these vertical spreads 
will cancel each other out. And this will happen on any form of vertical spread, whether it is a credit spread, a debit spread, or an iron condor. However, the wider the spread you choose, the less and less and less those Greeks will actually cancel each other out. Now, what about theta? Theta simply represents the time decay component of options. As time marches forward, as you get closer and closer to the expiration date, the value of options will slowly deteriorate. And specifically when you are selling options or using any strategy where you're taking in a credit, time decay is on your side, right? If time decay eats away the value of option contracts, then once again, if I initially sell this spread for 30 bucks and then time decay eats away half of that value, which would cause the price of the spread to drop to 15, then that's great. I can just buy the whole spread back for that lower price and make the difference as profit. But unfortunately, you can see here, both for the 418 strike put option and for the 417, the theta values for both of these contracts are exactly the same. So they're going to exactly cancel each other out. There's going to be no time decay on this put credit spread. And that's a huge, huge drawback. And finally, what about Vega? Now, Vega will tell you how much the price of a contract will change for a 1% move in implied volatility. So for example, looking back at the 418 strike put option, the Vega value here is 56. So if implied volatility for SPY increases by 1%, the price of this contract is going to increase by $56. And then conversely, if implied volatility contracts by 1%, then the price of this put option will fall by $56. But now take note of the Vega value for the 417 strike put option. It's 55. So the difference here is just one. And that means if let's say the implied volatility for SPY goes up by 1%, the value of this entire spread is only going to change by a single dollar. And that's very unfortunate both for option sellers and also option buyers. As an option seller, you want implied volatility to contract because that will reduce the value of the contracts you sold or reduce the value of your entire position. And for an option buyer, if implied volatility expands, that's going to increase the value of your position and therefore provide a profitable outcome. So ultimately with this very, very narrow credit spread, I have zero theta exposure, almost zero vega exposure, and a very tiny amount of delta exposure. So that means as time marches forward, and if I'm correct directionally on this trade, I am bullish on SPY, I do want the price to go up, so as those two things happen, the price of this spread is going to move extremely, extremely slowly, which is why at the beginning of this video, I said, I may still have to wait very close to the expiration date just to make half the profit on this trade. So the point of this video is not to say that it's impossible to make money with these very tight spreads. It's just ridiculously difficult. And just to reiterate again here, all this applies to a debit spread, Right, for example, if instead of this put credit spread, I wanted to buy a call debit spread like this, buy one contract for 22 strike call option, sell one contract for 23 strike call option, and pay a debit of about 60 bucks, all these same concepts apply. Right, the delta for the 422 strike call option is 51. The delta for the 423 strike call option is 49. The difference here is only two. So once again, you have almost no delta exposure. The theta values totally cancel out, which is actually a good thing for a debit-based strategy because time decay will work against you as an option buyer. And then the Vega values are both 57, so that will totally cancel out. You'll have no Vega exposure, no exposure to imply volatility whatsoever. And like I said, that's a huge drawback for both option buyers and option sellers. And then finally, as a last example, let me do an iron condor real quick. Okay, so here we go going to sell one contract for 30 strike call option, buy one contract for 31 strike call option. So that's the call side. And then on the put side, sell one contract for 11 strike put option, and then buy one contract for 10 strike put option. So the spread on both sides of the iron condor are only $1 wide. And I would say super narrow iron condors like this, these strategies actually suffer the worst because not only are you still gonna have no theta exposure, almost no Vega exposure, but now you're also gonna have almost no Delta exposure at all. In fact, in this case, for the time being, your Delta might be zero, right? Because for the 430 strike call option, the one I'm selling, the Delta here is 31. And then for the put option I'm selling, the 411 strike, the Delta here is 30. So these Deltas are gonna cancel out. And then for the long call option, the 431 strike, the Delta is 28. And then for the long put, 
the delta is 29, so once again, those two things pretty much cancel out entirely. So all the deltas on all four contracts totally cancel out, and you have basically zero delta on this iron condor. Zero delta, zero theta, zero vega, which all equates to the price of this entire spread, or this entire strategy, is not going to move in your favor at all for a very, very long time. So finally, this begs the question of how do you fix this issue? And it's a very simple answer. You just widen out the spreads, right? Instead of doing a $1 wide spread on each side of the iron condor, do a $5 wide spread or a $10 wide spread. The wider you go, the more like naked options this position will behave like and the more Greek exposure you will have. And that's going to be a great thing because then you'll have the opportunity to take advantage of Delta, Theta, and Vega which if those things work for you very quickly early on in the trade, you can take your profits very soon after making the trade. You won't have to wait all the way until the expiration date 41 days from today, which obviously gives the stock a lot of time to really move against you if it does decide to do so. The sooner you reach your profit target, the more successful you will be. You want to give the stock as little time as possible to work against you. And being able to take as much advantage as possible of the option Greeks is how you will achieve that. So with that being said, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.